Hello, kindergarten, first, and second grade, and welcome to Marking Period 2. This video is an introduction just for you, but the lesson is the same for my kindergartners up through my fifth graders. Some things have changed, so I'm walking you through the steps so you can try it by yourself sometime in the future. So if you see here, it says number one, number two, and number three. I have to follow them in order. So first, I'm going to watch the video for number one. This is Claude Monet, one of the most famous Impressionist painters who was born in France in 1840. Monet's father wanted him to go into the family business, but he wanted to be an artist. He drew caricatures of his teachers and of tourists on the beach, and he wasn't bad. This is a painting he made in 1872 called Impression Sunrise. He called it an impression because he was trying to capture an impression of what that sunrise looked like. This painting is the reason why Monet and a few fellow painters became known as Impressionists. An impression can be an idea or feeling about something. These artists tried to capture an impression of everyday life that they saw in front of them. Their style was known for its bright colours and its bold brushstrokes. They all lived in Paris in the late 1800s and were rebels. They put on their own exhibitions because official exhibitions at the Salon rejected their work. The Salon was made up of a jury of art professors who really liked tradition. The Impressionists all painted outdoors. In French, this is called painting en plein air. Bert Morisot was one of the only women to be part of the Impressionists' gang. Her paintings were often of women and children at home or in the garden, because women weren't supposed to sit alone in cafes. So, what did people think about Impressionism at the time? Hmm. The jury of the Salon thought that art should be neater, and the best proper subjects were myths, battles, and portraits of important people. But the Impressionists wanted to paint everyday life. By the final Impressionist exhibition in 1886, the art was wildly popular and people were queuing up to buy it. Not such evil wallpaper anymore. Today, Impressionism is a well-respected art movement that is recognized as changing the history of art forever. What's your impression of the Impressionists? Next, I'm going to go to number two. This is my video that will be the same for each week. Hello, and thank you for all of your awesome work last week. As always, it's been a pleasure. So this week, we are going to be traveling to our Meet the Artist room. This is where we will travel to meet the new artists of this lesson. You will have two options. I'm only asking you to complete one. Option number one, check out one or two books on the bookshelf of the Meet the Artist room. Tell me who you learned about and give me one fact you learned after reading those two, one or two books. Option number two, and just so you know, I do have these options on the pages when you click, so you don't have to be scared that you forget. You can always come back and rewatch this video if you need me to read it to you, but the words will be there. Anyway, option number two, click on the silhouettes, also known as the shadow people in the center of the room. This will take you to the next slide. You may click on the sound circles to hear more about any of the artists. Then pick one of your favorite artworks by an artist that is shown on the page. Last, I want you to write that artist's name and tell me why you selected that artwork as your favorite. I can't give you full credit if you don't tell me why. Everybody's reason is going to be a little bit different, so I want to hear your reason. Ready? Because, oh no, it's starting to happen. Time warp! When this is all over, you're going to hit the next arrow to go to our Meet the Artist room, and good luck! So as you can see, I made it through the time machine just fine. What was those directions? Hmm, 
push the next arrow. Click on the next arrow. And here we are in the Meet the Artist room. So what I always say is to press my sound circle first. You have two choices in our Meet the Artist room. Choose one. Either read a book and tell me about it in the comment box below, or click the silhouettes and tell me why you picked an artwork as your favorite in the comment box below. Remember, you can hear more about an artist by clicking their sound circle. Don't forget, you can type your answers or leave a voice answer by clicking the microphone in the comment box. If you forget how to do this, click the YouTube video for directions right here. So now we're going to read a story by J James Matthew. So I'm going to click on it. To enlarge it, I'm going to hit this button and it's full screen. Then I play it. Katie meets the Impressionists by James Mayhew. It was grandma's birthday and for a special treat, she took Katie to the art museum. Katie loved the museum because you never knew what you were going to see there. Look at the flowers in the painting, said Grandma. I can only see spots, said Katie. The pictures are made up of dabs of paint and color, said Grandma. But when you stand back, the dabs make a picture. Katie wandered off into the next room to try. There she saw a painting called The Luncheon by Claude Monet. When she stood back, Katie could see a garden. Grandma would love flowers like those for her birthday, she thought. She closed her eyes and sniffed. She was sure she could smell the flowers. And when Katie opened her eyes, there she was, among the daisies, hollyhocks, roses, and sunflowers. Can I pick some flowers? said Katie to the little boy whose name was Jean. Jean called his mother and nanny over and spoke to them in French. Un bouquet, said his mother. Oui, Jean, you go and help the girl. So Jean and Katie gathered flowers together. Are you going to paint them, he asked. No, they're for my grandma, said Katie. Papa paints flowers, said Jean. I'll show you. Jean took Katie to a room full of pictures, like a small gallery. This is Papa's studio, he said. He's a famous painter. His name is Claude Monet. I'm good at painting, said Katie. Let's try it. Using brushes, they mixed the paint on palettes and found canvases to paint on. They painted portraits of each other, using dabs, just like real painters. Now I'd better get back to Grandma, said Katie, and they went out into the garden. Will you come another day, asked Jean. I'd like to, said Katie. She picked up the bunch of flowers and, waving goodbye, climbed through the frame into the museum. Katie saw that the bunch of flowers was beginning to wilt. What I need is some water, she said, looking around the gallery. She saw a painting called Girl with a Watering Can by Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Katie looked around to make sure no one was watching her and climbed inside. Can I have some water for my flowers, said Katie. The little girl put the flowers into her watering can. Voila, she said, but the flowers still drooped and flopped over. Come and pick some more, said the girl. So Katie and the girl trampled through the garden, picking flowers. Katie pretended it was a jungle and that she was a panther chasing the girl. Suddenly, there was a terrible scream. It was the girl's mother. You have ruined my garden, she shouted. It wasn't me, said the girl. It was her, and she pointed at Katie. Come here, you naughty child, said the mother. But Katie ran for the picture frame and leapt into the museum, leaving the flowers scattered behind her. Katie sighed. She didn't dare go back to fetch the flowers. She went to look at the other pictures. There were a lot of pictures by Monet. Katie looked at one called Field of Poppies. Wasn't that Jean, the painter's son, walking through the field? Katie climbed in to see. It was Jean. He was delighted to see her. We're going on a picnic, he said, and Jean's mother said that Katie could join them. They walked together through the poppy field, looking for somewhere to sit. Jean helped Katie gather armfuls of poppies for Grandma. Afterward, they sat in the shade of the tree, 
perfect place for a picnic. Mrs. Monet opened a bag. She had bread and cheese and strawberries. But Jean heard a buzzing noise and looked up. A black cloud of bees was flying toward them. They're after my poppy, shouted Katie, her mouth full of strawberries. Jean and his mother ran toward the poppy field, but Katie ran to the picture frame and dived into the museum. The bees followed Katie, who ran on and on until she reached a window. She flung it open and threw the poppies out. The bees flew after them. Katie panted until she got her breath back. She still didn't have any flowers for Grandma. She saw another picture by Pierre-Auguste Renoir. It showed a girl at the theater and was called her first evening out. This girl was holding a posy of flowers. Grandma would love a posy like that, said Katie, before jumping into the picture. May I have your flowers, asked Katie. I'll swap my hair ribbon. Hush, said the girl. The ballet is about to begin. Katie looked for a seat, but they were all full. The theater manager appeared. Mademoiselle, may I see your ticket, he asked. Katie didn't have one, so she ran off down some steps. She could hear the manager coming after her, so she opened a door to hide and stumbled upon some people in bright costumes. When they started shouting at her, she ran the other way toward some bright lights and the sound of music. Katie pushed past heavy velvet curtains and found herself on stage. The dancers held their breath. So did the musicians in the orchestra. So did the audience. What was Katie going to do? Katie danced. The music started up again, and Katie pranced all around the stage. How the audience loved her. They had never seen anyone dance like that before. They cheered and clapped and threw flowers. Hundreds of flowers fell upon Katie as she twirled around. Well done, they shouted. Bravo! When the music stopped, Katie curtsied and gathered up her flowers. The manager rushed over to her. My dear, you have such talent. Katie blushed. I just jumped around a bit, really, she said. You must dance every night. You will be famous, said the manager. Thanks, but it's Grandma's birthday, said Katie. I must get back. But Katie could not find her way to the picture frame. There were people everywhere changing costumes. She was afraid she might be stuck in the theater picture forever. All of a sudden, she saw another frame. I must be in another picture, said Katie. She gathered up her bouquet and climbed into the museum. Katie looked back at the picture. The Blue Dancers by Edgar Degas, she said. I wonder if I would have been painted if I had stayed still long enough, she said. Then Katie ran over to her grandma and gave her the flowers. Happy birthday, grandma. My goodness, said grandma, wherever did you get these lovely flowers? Katie just laughed. But what was that in her pocket? A paintbrush. Monet will need that, she thought. She ran back to the first picture left the brush on the frame, and then ran to catch up with her grandma. So that was choice number one, boys and girls. And if you see, it says that right here in the picture frame. What you can do is you can now answer this question for me in the comment box below. You can videotape yourself giving your answer, or you can type your answer. Boys and girls, I want to know, what was your favorite artwork that Katie went into in the story? You can tell me below. If you don't like that, the other choice is you click on the silhouettes. Now, here are a bunch of artworks. Give me the number of your favorite artwork, and you can even tell me why it's your favorite. In fact, I would love to hear it. So I'll talk to you later. I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you.